Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Guess what? We're into a whole new month already. It is September. September. Wasn't it just like February a couple of days ago? Oh, gosh. September. School has started. And with that, Kingsbury Crafts. Good morning. Good morning. Oh. Gosh. So September, school season. School season is immediately followed by holiday season, which is immediately followed by the New Year season, which is immediately followed by Good Morning Barb, followed by Valentine's and um oh St. Patrick's Day, Easter. Let's see. Easter's April, May, May. What do we have in May? I know Mother's Day's in there, but do we ever? Do we have a month that does not have a holiday or or reason to embroider? Oh my goodness! So, anyways, today, today, what are we doing today? We're going to talk about automation and Oreo cookies. Actually, we're going to start with the cookies. Because, you know, who doesn't like a good Oreo cookie? Personally, I dip mine in a little bit of milk. Yeah, I love my Oreos. Um, so here's what prompted this week's, um, this week's topic. On social media, I have seen a lot of people asking about their bob intention, showing the back of their bobbin. Uh, the back of their their stitch out and uh, the stitching is so tight that the the upper thread meets oh excuse me meets in the middle and that there's really no no bobbin visible and I want to give you an idea as to why this can happen. Um, in some cases, it's in fact, if your machine's set up perfectly, it's still it's it's quite natural for something like that to happen. Um, yes, there can be a tension issue, but in order to know that, you need to do a bobbin test or or an H test or tension test, and you need to do it using one inch tall either H's or I's. And the reason you use the letter H or the letter I is because it has both vertical and horizontal um, columns. So you know you've got your right angle and you're, you're going, you know, again, horizontal or vertical. So I want to show you, I want to show you this test I did to show you, of course. Oh, there it is. So I did an H test. And um, I actually did four rows of H's. Um, there's the the H's size, one half inch, quarter inch, and um, just a bit of, yes, Barb, Gunnel does have, does have a free H embroidery file you can download. I've actually got several that I have passed along. If you have a 10 needle, a 12 needle, um, seven needle. I have H test that'll fit all of that. Um, but yes, even something as simple as the preloaded block font in your machine, if it's one inch, it it's perfect. Just a series of those, one for every needle. So just to um, go back to our H's, let me just translate this. The one inch file is a 25 millimeter tall H. The half inch is uh, approximately 12 millimeters. The quarter inch is approximately 6.35 millimeters. And that um, that 11 tenths of an inch, or excuse me, 11 one hundredths of an inch is approximately a three millimeter H. Yeah. Stitching three millimeter H's can be rough. Um, but it can be done. So, anyways, uh, so again, this is this this is the H size that I want to use. Let me turn on my good morning, Cindy. 
Cindy is currently out of town and she lost track of time. Well, Cindy, we don't mind. Besides, you're out of town. You're supposed to be visiting on family and such. Let's see. Apply settings. There we go. Do, do, do. Gustav, here, good morning. So these are the H's. This is the one inch, the half inch, the quarter inch, and the tenth. Um, so that's what I ran this test under. And what I want to show you is the bobbin side. So we're going to get rid of this one. And we're going to look here. These are the one inch, remember, on top. Okay. Cindy, Cindy is uh, multitasking. I can appreciate that. If you look at this one inch, you can see that we've got a really nice Oreo cookie. And I call it an Oreo cookie because it's got, it's got a crunchy cookie outer columns with a creamy white middle. Yep. Now, as we go, come along there, little doggie. And of course, I just used the colors that were on my machine. Kelly, hello, good morning. I didn't see you come in. Good morning. Um, so this is our next one. This is our half inch. Do you see my what was a perfect Oreo cookie? Not so perfect in the half inch sides. Those those upper threads, the bobbin is pulling tighter. It has less room to work. The machine is still moving fast, so there's not a lot of time for the thread to relax. So the bobbin is pulling tighter and the white and the upper thread is staying in, staying under longer. If we go down to our next one which is our um, quarter inch H, even less. We have even less bobbin thread showing. In fact, um, on this one, there's almost no bobbin thread showing at all. Cindy says she likes the term Oreo cookie. I think it's something that everybody can um, identify with. Everybody knows what an Oreo cookie, well, I would hope, my goodness, somebody who doesn't know an Oreo cookie, we need to take care of that. But um, yeah, Oreo cookie is something that most everybody is familiar with. So, it, you know, the crunchy cookie outer and the creamy white middle. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is our quarter inch. We get down to our three millimeter. Where's the bobbin thread? Of course, my camera, I have a new camera. Um, of course, it's not, it's, it's a new, it's a new phone that includes a new camera. And I'm still playing with some of the camera settings. I think this is the, um, I think this is too intense at this point. So I, I need to work with that. But look, this is my three millimeter, which is a very, it's, it's like, you know, less than a millimeter um, column. And we show very, very little bobbin thread. The point I'm trying to make here is that when you look at your backside of your stitch out, and you see that there's not a lot of bobbin thread. Take into consideration how wide that column is. If the column is uh, less than one, you're going to have considerably less bobbin. Take into consideration. The only way you're going to know if you have truly good bobbin tension 
is to do a bobbin attention test and look for your Oreo cookie. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about that? Let's see. We're all stitching at the same time, same bobbin. So the upper tension issues. If it's a good question. So we can know that we have an upper tension issue if we can know we have an upper tension issue if um the upper tension if the bobbin if the bobbin column our oreo cookie our creamy white middle uh changes sizes with the stitch outs if the upper threads are all set at their correct tension and the bobbin is all set at its correct tension the bobbin affects all of our needles each cone each needle has its own different tension so if they are all correct you'll have your oreo cookie if you don't have your oreo cookie you can strongly suspect that it is your upper tension not your bobbin tension kelly wants to know how often i do a, a attention test i do a tension test um at this point i do a tension test only when i start to see issues because i know my machine is set correctly um and it can take a lot to get the tensions exactly right on your machine if ever you have a, a service tech come to your to your machine to service the machine Tell them that you want them to also adjust the tension. Um, and then you can feel you can feel pretty confident that your tension is correct. Of course, run a tension test while they're still there, because if something's going to go wrong, it's better to have them there to fix it than have them leave. And then a week later, you say, oh, my goodness, I need to have them come back. Barb is right. Um, she runs a monthly tension test when she does her monthly maintenance and she runs tension tests when she has an issue and again I run mine when I have an issue if I've broken a needle and it was a severe break you know you, you know those those are the ones where the needle jabs and 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 scars your needle plate or um, could possibly have damaged your bobbin case your bobbin race um, that's where I do a full inspection and make sure that everything is in good shape and I do a tension test. If you have a serious needle break like that, you could turn, you could set off the timing, which is another issue that you need to be aware of. Um, but you'll get a good, you'll get a good idea of that through experience doing your tension test. Uh, if I have a lot of thread breaks, now thread breaks are thread breaks happen when the needle is pulled out of place. Maybe somewhere in the pathing it's hung up someplace. Um, so I, I check all of that. Do a tension test if you feel that something is wrong. Do a tension test once a week just to get comfortable with it so you have a better idea of what your machine is doing and how it's doing and um what it should be doing Gusto wants to know if um if i trust the machine's auto tensioning system uh like with melco melco has a a software system that's outside of its machine um, that allows you to uh calibrate the tension in the software um if it were a new machine to me and i was not overly familiar with how it works i would run that weekly tension test just to make sure that everything is, is running the way it should be 
And then with time and experience with the machine, I will learn to, um, I will learn to what to expect and whether it should be trusted or not. Cindy is saying, even just paying attention to when you take your hoop design, look at the back and take note of the head that you took it off of and for issues. You're welcome, Gusa. And Cindy, that's an awesome idea. Anytime I take um, work off of my machine, I turn it over and give it a quick look-see. That's going to tell me every time if there's something that doesn't look strange. Just remember that when your columns are narrower, your bobbin thread is going to be narrower to the point where you might not even have any showing. Okay, so we're about halfway through and I want to talk to you about auto digitizing because that is another piece uh, that's been coming up a lot in social media. Uh, what's the best auto digitizer? What's the best software for auto digitizing? And of course, you know, most of us know auto digitizing is not the way to go. Um, and here is why. Hold on a second. Auto digitizing is only as good as the programming. Your auto digitizing, oops, too big. It's going to do great with simple geometric shapes. Here, we're going to do some auto digitizing. Ready? Come along, little doggy. It does great. Here we are. Oh, that's a beautiful, beautiful auto digitizing. Isn't that a, it's wonderful. And when, when the companies are uh, selling their software to you and they say, we have auto digitizing, they're going to bring up a file. They're going to bring up a graphic. They know they're going to bring up a graphic they know is going to auto digitize perfectly. Cindy, you got a point here. Hang on. Let me get up there. Cindy says that she never learned how to auto digitize in her software. She uses Wilcom. Why waste the time when it's not quality embroidery? And you're right. Now, yes, this simple square, this simple square is easy enough to do without auto digitizing. Come along, little doggy. Take my um, pen froze. There we go. There we go. Ta-da! I can do that in less time than it took to auto digitize. Now, what about what about more complex pieces? Here's a file that I did not too long ago. It's pretty typical of what I get. You know, something with a little detail. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are exactly right. Um, only. Cindy is saying hello to Bella. She can hear Bella in the background. Um, she's actually trying to entice the cat to play with her this morning. That's her come play with me bark. So let's go back to our bulldog. Okay, so this is the representation of something that's pretty typical in my digitizing world. And we're going to auto-digitize this. We're going to use the... Um, All righty. All right. I can't seem to get back to the quick. Obviously, it doesn't like that one. All right. So we're just going to go through.
Well, that's not too bad. Let's get rid of our graphic here. That's our piece auto digitized. Now, the thing with auto digitizing is yes, you can go through and create your stitches. But in order to finish this piece up, we are going to have to do a lot of manual stitching. Of course, this is really rough. Okay, we're going to have to go in and edit virtually everything in this file. Barb's here saying she, she agrees with the auto-digitizing. And again, that's why I'm here today, because I've seen a lot of posts recently about, you know, the best auto-digitizing. Well, there is no best auto-digitizing. That is because your brain can make calculations faster You can you can calculate faster what needs to be done to make this a good file. Um, Cindy wants to know if it adds in the underlay, and it does. Most software will, um, whatever the default underlay is, it will add that. Gusta says that his um, his dealer says that if you can scan a picture, you can um, you can uh, auto fix a. Um, uh, magnificent um, a magnificent embroidery you can make you can auto digitize perfect embroidery good embroidery and it is funny just it it's it's not done hi frank we're talking about auto digitizing so here's the image that we did auto digitizing what did i have what did i have um on high doll that is my file. That is my manually digitized file, which um, I think turned out really nice. So what about what about this one? This one looks pretty easy, right? All right, it won't let me do it. Do, do, do. So we're gonna start over. Nope, that's the wrong one. Cancel. All right. That file is now auto digitized. Yeah. What needs to be fixed here? Well, in my world, at this size, this column is seven and a half millimeters wide. So in my world, that should be a satin stitch. So now I have to go and make this a satin stitch. Well, that's not a good satin stitch because all of these pieces need to be broken apart. So now I have to go in and I have to cut here and then cut here and cut here, cut here because i need to break all these arms off of here so now that i've done that now i have to go in and um correct all of these edges to make sure everything is right for example in this one here if we look we have too many nodes so we need to go in and change the nodes to get everything right and this is wrong and this is what we came up with manually digitizing that's what i would want if i were auto digitizing but you can't get that you cannot get that we're going to copy and we're going to paste and we're going to hide that. You cannot get this auto digitizing 
in any software because the software does not read cindy thank you that was so nice of you cindy likes my bulldog it's sweet so you can't because the the file if you remember correctly in the artwork this was all one element this right here is one element. This is one element. The software cannot distinguish where the breaks in that element should be. So if you auto digitize, and we did, right? We auto digitized. We auto digitized right here. If you auto digitize, you now have to go in and break all that apart and fix it. And the only way you can go in there and fix it is if you know your software, how it works, what tools to use. So it's not a it's not a click and done. You still have to know what to do to fix it. And honestly, in the time it would take me to fix this with all the cuts and the and the changes and the nodes and the um, points. I did this, which is exactly what I want in this file. All right, we're going to do one more. This is another one that's pretty typical. Um, yes, I digitize for people everywhere, but I live in the Midwest, so I get a lot of, of Midwest. Um, so here. God, it won't let me do that. Probably because, probably because I'd already set it up. I'm gonna bring this back down to size because you want to do this at size. Hello, Karina, is that right? From South America, welcome, welcome to the United States. I'm up here um, in the Midwest. We're kind of in the middle of the country. It's good to see you and welcome. We're talking about auto digitizing. So, okay. Brought the um, graph file back in. We're going to bring it up to fit. And then we're going to auto digitize. Ready? Now I'm going to change this color to something you can see. All right. Oh. Yeah. Cindy was saying that she thinks it's a bad selling point for software developers. You can't auto digitize and sell it as a good sell file. You're right. You can't. And if you think about it, anytime, if you go to any software dealership, they will mention that they have an auto digitizing function, but they will not display it. They will not demonstrate it. And they won't demonstrate it because this is what they get. Hey, Jesse, it's good to see you. Good to see you. So what do you have to do to fix this one? Oh my gosh, where to start? The lettering, the white lettering, that's supposed to be filled in. Um, our little calf here and our mama cow, she has some sort, somehow uh, blended into the banner. It's not what we want. We want to show the grass at their feet. We want to show mama's tail mama's udders um it is a cow after all now she's got right there but you know just just not karina you are a smart smart person no auto digitizing um cindy situations that you can use auto digitizing right there that's about it if it's a very simple geometric shape, 
you can get a good stitch out with that. But again, geometric shapes are easy enough to do manually. So again, why? Let's go back to our cow. So here are the elements in the cow. And, and even if I were to just simply change this to a tatami stitch it's still not good it's still going to need all kinds of edits i don't want her back half not to you know not to have a natural division um her front leg this this leg here this leg here well it's the leg and part of that banner Okay, so what did I do? What does this look like after it's been finished? Here is the file I created. Yes, Barb, Barb is right. Barb is saying that she would still check all the settings. Yes, you want to. You want to make sure that the the um, underlay is what you want. You want to make sure that the stitch, um, the stitch length, the stitch density, you want to make sure all of that is right, even with auto digitizing. And again, the only way you can do that is to know your software, learn your software, educate yourself on your software, know where the running stitch is and how to use it, know where the satin columns are and how to use them. No, and you don't need to have some big, massive software. You just need to know where the tools are in the software that you have and what you need to do to make them work. For example, yeah, let's look at our cow's grass. My cow's grass is a satin stitch that I created. And then with the tools in my system, I was able to create a jagged edge. But you know, I don't need a satin stitch with, with um, element features that I can change. Yeah. Grass with a running stitch. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. The software doesn't have to be anything. Good point, Barb. Barb is saying software can be quite spendy, pricey. Um, so why not learn it and its features? Exactly. Why would you spend even, even a quality software a home version even. Um, Wilcom has a home version uh, called Hatch. It's got it's got many of the features that are in Wilcom, but they are they are more user um, they are more automated. If you're going to use that software, why? And that software is about a thousand dollars, maybe twelve hundred now. If you're going to spend $1,200 on a piece of software, why are you only going to use the click and go function? Why are you only going to use the automated software function? Why do you want to use just this? That's not worth $1,200 to me. Would you spend $1,200 to get that cow? No. I have one more. I have one more piece that I want to show you that um, somebody sent me to digitize. Now, auto digitize that yeah it's not gonna happen this this artwork 
not really artwork. This graphic is also so pixelated that the software is not going to even be able to identify what gets colored where. This um, graphic, according to the auto digitizing, has 70 colors in it. When I was done with it, I had six. The software is also going to change the shapes. Remember, we had so many. This is such a pixelated piece. The software needs to identify. Yeah. Frank, you are exactly right. This one is a mess. And again, to auto digitize it. That's the software's idea. Let's see, did I pull up the, the actual file in here? No, I did not. Give me a second and I'll go find the file. Do, do, do. This is the file that I did. That, I think, turned out really well. And it stitches really well. I was able to simulate the, um, the gears using different features. And again, didn't have to use, I didn't have to have a fancy software to do all these features. Everything that was done in this file, thanks, Jesse. Everything that was done in this file can be done manually using either just the running stitch, uh, the satin stitch, or fill stitch. Those are your three basic stitches, your three basic um, stitch types. Easy enough to do. But again, if I were to auto digitize this, I would not be happy with, with what the um, system comes up with. Okay. So that is my lecture on auto digitizing anybody have any questions anybody have any thoughts you want to mm -hmm. add to this i'm hoping that um next time thank you frank i'm hoping that next time i see something pop up in in social media um that i can direct them to this video and say listen second half of this video is all about um auto digitizing Go take a look. Um, first half of this video is about your your uh, columns, your bobbin columns on the back. Go go watch this; it'll help you. Um, next week, you got any thoughts, any questions, um, anything you want me to, anything that you want me to uh, use as a topic? Just send me a message. I'll be there. Uh, let's see what else have we got. Uh, Oh, I knew there was something else. Yeah. Let me pull it up. Virtual applique getaway. Applique getaway virtual. Guess who's teaching? Yeah, me. Yeah, look. Um, the virtual applique getaway is really cool. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> come on. Bella heard me cheering. She wants to come be a cheerleader. Um, the virtual applique getaway is a really cool idea for those who can't go to the actual event. Uh, maybe your budget doesn't work for it. Maybe uh, it's too far away. Um, you know, there are a dozen reasons that you can't make it to 
a trade show or uh, the event Bert, uh, Applicate Getaway. So running from October 20th through February 1st, educators are going to post videos, training videos, tutorial videos that are available for you to watch. Um, you have it's an all access. You have access to all of the videos from October 20th through February 1st for the low, low fee of $25. Yep. If you can't watch it on the 20th, pick it up on, on you know, Thanksgiving. Um, it'll be there forever. Well, no, not forever. Sorry. It'll be there from October 20th through February 1st. What am I teaching? Cindy wants to know what I'm teaching. Gosh, I need to get control of this mouse. Where is it? You're welcome, Gail. Um, what am I teaching? I am going to, I'm teaching a class that I'm calling um, Hooping the Hard Stuff. Well, that title may change. Uh, we're going to talk about how to hoop. It is. You don't always get to watch, but a great price to help support applicant getaway. And it is. Um, $25 is, you know, practically nothing. And in return, you get access to uh, all the classes. You get access to uh, downloadable discounts and, and goodies, goodies and gifts. And somebody wants to run off and play with the cats. Um, so what am I teaching? Hooping. How to hoop those odd pieces. How to hoop those odd pieces without buying specialized equipment. Okay. Um, for example, how do you hoop a pair of socks or a mitten? Now there's a little tool that you can buy that'll help. It'll hold the sock exactly where you want it, and then it'll support itself in your hoop. Um, I don't recall how much that is. It was actually quite reasonable last time I looked, um, but you don't need it. Let's see what else is there. Oh, how to hoop a shirt pocket. Now again, there's a dozen different ways, and you can buy specialized equipment to. Stitch a shirt pocket, but you don't need to. You want to stitch, um, you want to do dog collars or dog leashes, you know, just that narrow webbing. You could buy a hoop that'll hold it in place. Now that one I know is about three, three to six hundred dollars, depending on where you get it. Oh, but you don't need to. That's what my class is going to teach. Alrighty, but you do need a hat hoop. Frank, you're right. When you're doing uh, when you're doing baseball caps and structured hats, yes, you need that hoop because the hat is curved and you want to be able to turn the hat. Now, unstructured hats, you don't need a hat hoop for that, and you don't need that fancy um, hoop insert. It's nice. You want to spend the money and get it that's fine i'm not going to stop you from being being a gadget gadget gal gadget guy um but you don't need it and that's what i'm going to show you actually karina that's going to be you can this hooping um that i'm going to teach either flatbed or a uh, multi-needle machine. The only thing with the flatbed, the only thing that makes it difficult with the flatbed is that some things you're going to have to manipulate more to get it under the needle. For example, um, the shirt might be a little trickier 
because you you can't get the body of the shirt to stay under. Kelly, one of the things that I want to teach is um, hoop calibration. What is hoop calibration? It's uh, setting up your hoop for repeat use with the same stabilizer fabric combination. So you've got, um, and again, these are not magnetic hoops. I am going to use the hoops that came with my flatbed machine. Um, there are some special uh, other products that you need to get, uh, sticky stabilizer or spray adhesive, straight pins, but that'll all be in part of the class documentation. Barb, yep, painter's tape and clips to hold items in there, weird items. I do have a collar frame and a jig. Wow. That's, um, but it wasn't, it, if you're going to invest in that specialized equipment, do it because you do that project often and it helps in uh, the production. It helps in keeping your production line smooth and, and working smoothly. So, Okay, so I'm going to teach a virtual getaway, applicate getaway. Um, got some other classes lined up for next year. We'll talk about those later. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to say goodbye now. I am going to see you next time. Wasn't that fun? Do you have more questions? Do you want to learn something new? Join me at quicktostitch.com for coffee and conversation, and we'll talk about it embroidery machines, designs, and business. Hope to see you soon.